Alright, so welcome back to your physics teacher with me, Mr. Fernando. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how we can draw a position vector and then how we can go from position vectors into determining the direction of the displacement vector. So to start with, we think back to the story that we've been talking along about our cheetah and here we have the tree. Whenever you record in motion I mentioned before, so if you're using your phone to record, you want to try to find one point that doesn't change from frame to frame to frame. Now that would be the tree in this case. So the tree is a good place to set up the coordinate system. Now the coordinate system comes with a bit of a trick because you have to choose where to place your coordinate system. So like I was saying, choose a fixed object from frame to frame. But even then, you can place your coordinate system, which is just your x and y plane, anywhere along the tree. Now, for convenience, in most questions, it is a good idea to place it at the bottom of the tree. Now, the coordinate system, all it's measuring is the distance along the x dimension and the distance along the y dimension. So you could put meters if you wanted in this case. Meters. Years. So the tree is very helpful because it acts like our origin. And the initial position or the initial frame of where the cheetah is, we're going to try to use it by dots. And to indicate that is where we first begin our timer, we indicate it with the number zero above it. Once we've done that, we can draw a position vector. Our position vector is always from where the object is at time zero relative to the origin. So what I mean by that, you can imagine connecting the origin to where the cheetah is at that specific time. But because the position vector is the vector, the direction is going to be towards the object. The notation that we're going to use for position vectors I don't know where they get this letter from, but they use the letter D. And to indicate that it belongs to the time zero, where we first begin our timer, you put an index number zero with a hat on top because we're talking about vector quantities. So here let's define this D initial. As our initial position vector. But you know, things are always in motion and cheetahs don't usually like to stay in one position, right? They're usually hungry, so you're going to see later on when cheetah is in full flight mode, ready to attack. But for now, our cheetah is just strolling along to the right, and after one second, the frame is indicated by time 1. But how do we draw the position vector? Again, we go from the origin, where the object is at that specific time and in the direction towards the object. And for the next position vector, we're going to use the notation of D1. So this is the position vector at the time D equals to one second. But in a previous video, I talked to you about how position vectors are not very useful because, like I mentioned earlier, it depends on where you draw it, and many different people can draw at different locations. Or they can even choose a different tree if there was a tree. So check out the position vector politics in a different video. But in this video, we're just going to keep our chosen origin, and instead, talk about how we can draw the displacement vector. So the displacement vector is going to be the change in the object's position. And usually how we indicate a change in something, we use the letter delta in math, and position we use the letter d. So the notation for the displacement vector is delta d, and it is a vector quantity, so that also gets the arrow at the top. And in this specific case, it's going to be our position vector time t1 minus our initial position vector time t0. 
So it's going to be D1 minus E0. Uh, more generally, you might see it written as final position minus initial position, but that just depends on the time interval that you're interested in looking at. Alright, so now we have to define this displacement vector in terms of a subtraction, but it's not a regular subtraction because these are vector quantities, so we need to subtract vector quantities. Now, one way that I showed you is to think of it like addition instead. So we're going to rewrite this as D1 plus negative D initial. And how we add vectors together, we're going to be doing our head to tail method. If you recall, I tried to come up with a somewhat clever way of thinking about it. You take the head of the first vector and you attach it to the tail of the second vector. When you think of a dog and a cat, we're not going to do dog and cats in this video, but here let's take this further. So when you're doing vector addition, you're going to connect the vectors head to tail. And this negative here is a scalar multiplication, or more, I mean, less fancy way of thinking about it is opposite direction. So let's try to determine the displacement vector based on the simple math here. So what we do first, we take the head of the first position vector, D1, and we attach it to the tail of our initial position vector, but in the opposite direction of it. So let's see what it looks like here. So that's our first vector D1, and now we're going to attach it to the tail of negative D initial. So if this is our original direction, we have to make it in the opposite direction. And notice that this is what we attach head to tail. Now, the displacement vector, or the resultant in general, is the tail of the first vector to the head of the second vector. And that's our displacement here. That was a D. Let's see if that kind of makes sense. The displacement comes to the change in position. So, from 0 to 1, how much did our position change by? This amount. So, that's correct in length, and in what direction? It moves towards the right. Or to the right. So that makes sense, but you see how difficult it was just to get something that is so, so obvious. So the displacement vector, a much easier way to remember it is just the vector that joins from 0 to frame to the first frame, and that would be our first displacement. Delta D zero. If our cheetah continues to move along to the right, and let's say it is here at time two seconds, now a much easier way to draw the space vectors is just to play the game connect the dots. So the length of the vector is the distance between the two points and is towards the second frame. Thank goodness we didn't have to draw the position vectors, that would have been too much work, right? So now it's so easy, just play the game connect the dots. And this is our delta D1. So now you saw an easy way of doing it, just play connect the dots, and that way you can also see the direction. And you won't have to develop the subtraction which I did for you, just impress you. Because that way you can watch my next video where I can show you how to do the velocity vectors and hopefully you learn about that as well. See you.